So you don't have to digest everything on this slide, but what this is um, illustrating is that if you can identify the imbalances in the body, there are very specific treatments and therapeutics that you can use to bring everything back into balance again, whether that's um, targeted biochemical or nutritional kinds of strategies, or whether it's lifestyle changes or um, maybe specific therapies that you can use. So here's just a couple examples of neuroinflammatory conditions where you can identify the imbalance and then you can bring things back into balance to very targeted therapies. So let's take anxiety, for example, you know, the first one here. So some of the things that are well-documented to be in, out of balance in anxiety is um, you have gut dysbiosis. Um, you have nutrient imbalances. So for instance, oftentimes there's low levels of zinc and essential fatty acids in anxiety. Um, there are autoantibodies to brain tissues with anxiety. So those are imbalances, right? So how do we fix that? What do we do to address that? So there's lots of different things you can do. Let's take the microbiome, for instance. The most important thing you can do to um, help address micro, uh, microbiome dysbiosis um, to get that gut bacteria back in shape is through diet changes. So things that help support a robust microbiome are um, diverse sets of foods. So if you eat uh, just one like class of foods, like lots of carbohydrates or lots of sugars or lots of processed foods, you're not going to have a robust microbiome. Uh, a robust microbiome requires lots of different diversity of especially fibrous foods, maybe different types of meats and fats or um, a diversity of clean organic foods. Um, and also things that have been eaten by humans for thousands of years, for millennia, are fermented foods. And fermented foods are things that have natural, um, you know, uh, probiotic uh, gut bacteria. Um, and those kinds of foods can help restore the microbiome. Um, supplementation, of course, is um, what you um, often can do when you see a nutritional deficiency. So if you have a low level, you can get tested. There's blood tests that you can do. You can have a low level of zinc, vitamin D, and magnesium, let's say. You can take nutritional supplements or you can eat a lot of foods that have those kinds of uh, nutrients. So for instance, you find out you have low zinc, you can eat a lot of oysters. Oysters are uh, you know, a wonderful source of, of, of zinc uh, as an example. Um, and this is also what um, Terry Walls did with her MS, right? So she ate an anti-inflammatory diet. She ate things to help restore her microbiome. Anxiety isn't just about um, gut bacteria either though. None of these conditions are just about gut bacteria. There's also sort of the whole body things that need to be taken into consideration. So like um, trauma, for instance, there can be um, all kinds of emotional trauma that's sort of under the surface that sometimes need to be addressed as you're repairing the physical aspects of the body. Sometimes people also need to have more emotional psychosocial elements um, addressed. So for instance, um, there are many modalities for helping people overcome trauma. Um, EMDR is an example of one. That's a rapid eye movement technique that many psychiatrists and psychologists will use. EFT, emotional freedom te uh, technique, that's a tapping you might've heard of. Um, there's a wonderful um, therapy called Safe and Sound, which is a listening therapy that helps to tone the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is the um, nerve that connects the brain and the gut and is so um, important for moving us from a sympathetic state into a parasympathetic state. So there's just so many amazing resources out there. And this is just sort of a sampling of the different types of things you can do. The point of this slide is just to show, find the imbalances, uh, address the imbalances, and then um, look for the therapies that might help um, regulate and restore balance in the body. So um, this, a couple other things I didn't mention are some of the lifestyle things that people can do. So I already mentioned removing inflammatory foods. So things like wheat, sugar, um, you know, sometimes eggs, um, depending, uh, sometimes vegetable oils, like vegetable oils are such a baddie when it comes to inflammation in the body. So those things like, you know, canola oil or cottonseed oil, or, um, you know, the different kinds of corn oil, those things are terrible for inflammation. So those things need to come out of the diet because they're, you know, eating them routinely causes inflammation. But one um, other lifestyle feature I did not mention is movement and exercise. So the number one way to reduce oxidative stress in the body, again, there's a free radicals floating around, destroying the cells and causing inflammation 
number one way to reduce it is exercise. It doesn't need to mean like going running a, a marathon. You don't need to go and, you know, play in a sports team. You can do yoga. You can do any kind of movement based exercise. Movement is in, profoundly important for bringing inflammation down in the body. Um, and then another area of importance is sleep. So it's, um, you know, something we, as Americans, I think, don't prize as much as we should. Um, I think that sleep is under recognized as an important therapeutic tool for people who are struggling with chronic health conditions. Um, only in the last less than 10 years, it's really only think, I think been like eight, eight or nine years that was discovered. Um, they discovered the glymphatic system. So they didn't know uh, up until recently that the brain actually has a lymphatic system. All right. We know about lymphatics in our body. That's how we get, um, you know, sort of drain and move a lot of those immune cells and we drain toxins through our lymphatic system. And that's how we get, you know, detox. Um, the, the brain needs to detox too. So when you, when you think about it, if there's been some kind of injury to the brain, whether that's again, like a, a concussion or a breach to the blood brain barrier and the microbes are getting in there and there's inflammation in there, when you have inflammation, you're creating all kinds of cellular debris and cellular wastes. And those need to get out of the brain. The brain will not heal if you have all that cellular debris in there. So when does that happen? It happens at night when you're sleeping. So if you don't sleep, the glymphatic system does not drain all of those cellular waste and toxins out. So, you know, again, if you're feeling like there's some kind of chronic health condition that isn't resolving, if you're not sleeping, you're not doing your body any service. So sleep is critically important to allow your body to get rid of all those, those wastes. Um, I also listed here some other common um, anti-inflammatory supplements that people take. And when I say anti-inflammatory, I don't necessarily mean um, it's suppressing the immune response. It's more working with your body to help manage inflammation. So things like turmeric, CBD oil, it's a cannabis oil, um, N-acetylcysteine, NAC, ALA, alpha lipoic acid, vitamin C, critically important as an anti-inflammatory supplement, vitamin E, vitamin D, essential fatty acids, especially things like cod liver oil, um, melatonin is an antioxidant. Um, so these are all um, anti-inflammatory supplements that can help bring that inflammation down in the body. Um, and again, the last, the last um, piece I'll mention is that if your body is struggling to eliminate an infection like strep, or these Lyme cofactors. Um, sometimes there are antimicrobial strategies you can use. I a, a lot of um, physicians like Susuedo again with the NIH and others who have been sort of tracking this pandas and pans um, phenomenon tend to go to antibiotics to fight the infections in pans and pandas. And while that may help bring the infection down in the short term, just remember that there's a consequence, a long term problem with that. So, cause you're affecting the microbiota. So, you know, I've talked to many families who've had success and many clinicians working with these families who've had success using herbal antimicrobials. So things like berberine or cat's claw or other kinds of um, things that target the microbes but don't necessarily destroy the microbiome. So that's an important um, thing to be thinking about is possible antimicrobial therapy to deal with the infections. So again, I, I will bring this back to, you know, it's not, um, you know, in, in conventional medicine, we're very used to one diagnosis and like one set of drugs that we can take to fix this or to address this. That's really kind of a symptom suppressive model. Like, oh, you have, um, you know, you have pain. So I'm going to give you an anti-inflammatory to suppress the inflammation. Um, that is um, a different approach. This is approach where you look at all the different things happening in and around your life and trying to maximize your body's resilience in order to basically allow the body to do the healing on its own. Trust your body knows what to do if you give it the right supports and you remove as many of the stressors as possible. So um, what we um, call this is total load, that your body is like um, kind of like a barrel and it only has so much capacity to handle toxins or stress or infections or what have you. And what you want to do is reduce as many of those exposures as possible to keep your immune system so it's not overloaded. And at the same time, you want to do all the things you can to build the resilience in your body. And that's you know, sleep, 
and movement, exercise, going into nature, getting natural sunlight without sunblock, all these kinds of things that human bodies have done for thousands of years and have been very healthy doing. We don't do these things anymore. So we need to reintegrate some of the more natural um, and health supporting activities that human beings um, evolved to, to do. So if you think about kind of the big picture, what are some, um, no matter what the neuroinflammatory condition is, so again, whether it's pans pandas, whether it's autism, ADHD, what are some of the things that you want to do to um, help any of these conditions? So the first thing is start by reducing your total load. So that's looking at anything that might be causing stress um, or it might stimulate the immune system in a negative way. So that can be removing food allergy, allergens that most people don't even know they have. Like you might have a sensitivity to wheat or dairy or corn or soy or something like that. And every time you eat that food, it's causing inflammation in your body and your body has to deal with it. So the goal is to bring as many of those inflammatory experiences out of your body as possible. And it's personal, it's case by case. It isn't everybody's, you know, reacting to wheat or everybody's reacting to dairy. It's like, what is it for you? Um, because everybody's different. Um, this also um, reducing total load um, also means taking out toxic products, um, you know, personal care products, things that have chemicals in them in your soap, shampoos, laundry detergent, um, you know, stop using sunscreen, um, anything that might be putting toxins into your body. And also looking around in your environment, very few people, um, for instance, when they move into a new home or apartment, they don't test their water, they don't test their air, they don't look around to see what's around the environment that might be toxic. But um, chances are, um, most people are exposed to toxins in their in their daily life. And if we can start understanding what some of those toxins are and reduce our exposures, that's going to help your immune system do its job better. Second key strategy for all of these conditions is the gut healing and the microbiome repair, which I talked a little bit about. Number one way to do that is through diet, especially fermented foods. Um, and then um, I already mentioned increasing sort of the general lifestyle health supports. Get outside, get some sleep do some exercise. And then um, for sure, kids who have pans and pandas sometimes need more intensive therapeutics, like going outside and changing your diet and sleeping isn't going to necessarily fix these kids or help them regulate again. Sometimes you need a little bit more, especially kids with autism spectrum disorders, where there's rehabilitative work that needs to be done. Um, regulating the, um, the nervous system is, is profoundly important. So again, trying to figure out ways to use therapies to get the body from that sympathetic state, fight or flight, into the parasympathetic state, which is the sort of rest and digest or rest and repair kind of state. Um, and I mentioned a few, um, like the sleep and sound therapy as an example, or trauma therapy can be helpful that way as well. Um, also, to dive a little bit deeper, it's important to put your brain around thinking functionally and bioindividually. So, um, you know, you can look at a whole host of conditions and there's lots of medical literature on common nutrient deficiencies seen in this condition. So I gave you a couple examples. So like in tinnitus, which is that um, incessant ear ringing, it's commonly known to be, um, there, there is a vitamin B12 deficiency commonly seen in people who have this condition or in ADHD. Most kids with ADHD have a zinc deficiency, an essential fatty acid deficiency and a magnesium deficiency. Very common, sensory processing, magnesium, hyperesthesia, which is a sensory um, sensitivity B12 deficiency. So like this is documented in the medical literature, it's very common. So you wanna think functionally again, like what's deficient and how can I um, repair that or how can I get that back in balance? But don't take that as like rule of law because we are bio-individuals. And just because you have ADHD doesn't mean you are also deficient in zinc or you are also deficient in essential fatty acids. That's a place to start, but you kind of wanna think about testing yourself as a bioindividual because I'm different from you and things I've been exposed to are different from you and what I eat is different from you. So you really have to look at each individual person as their own um, personal case. And there's no one size fits all for anything. There's no protocol that everybody can follow. So this may sound kind of overwhelming. Like, what do I do? How do I find out what functionally is imbalanced? What are the physiological imbalances for me or for my child? So one of the very first things you can do is you can go get some routine laboratory diagnostics done. And many of these um, sort of basic ones can be even covered by insurance. So I listed a few here that you could just go get basic blood work done. 
ask your primary care physician for these kinds of tests just to see what might be out of balance. So you can get, um, and these are not expensive and they're, and they're covered by most insurance. So you can get um, a CBC, which is a basic blood count, liver and kidney function. You can find out about electrolytes and fluids, vitamin D. Um, and by the way, most people are vitamin D deficient. Fatty acids, um, you can look at your thyroid. Um, hemoglobin A1C, which is a measurement of blood sugar over time. That's a really important one because um, spikes in blood sugar can cause all kinds of inflammation in the body. Iron, um, lead, and other metals that are commonly tested for in conventional medical settings. You can look for strep. If you have a child who has one of these neuro neuroinflammatory conditions, you can look to see if strep, strep might be at play. Um, you can also get some very basic Lyme tests um, that aren't necessarily exhaustive. Like they're not going to um, identify all the different types of um, microbes and co-infectors that are often present in, in, in Lyme or what's often called Lyme, but you can get some basics. And then also you can do um, some basic genetic testing. So there are all kinds of uh, genetic polymorphisms um, that actually create um, predispositions uh, or, or vulnerability for people. So there's one that you may have heard of or, or one type of a genetic mutation called MTHFR, which will um, about 40% of um, Caucasian people, for instance, have that genetic mutation. And that actually means that you may have uh, a reduced capacity to detoxify. That's important to know. Um, and there's certain like B vitamins you can take to help overcome that. Um, so that, that can be um, uh, important information to know. In addition to that, there are also specialized boutique labs, um, typically not covered by insurance, but um, you can go deeper. You can find um, really complex um, panels of um, nutrient analysis. So you can find out what kind of nutrient deficiencies that you have. You can do all kinds of um, analysis of your gut microbiome. So there's stool tests you can do. Um, and then there are um, specific tests you can do, especially for pans and pandas, to find out what autoantibodies you have to your brain tissue. So there's um, a physician named um, Marion um, uh, Cunningham who created a um, panel called the Cunningham panel, which looks for specific types of autoantibodies, which helps explain maybe why you might have certain symptoms if you have um, a positive test um, results from the Cunningham panel. There's a company called Moleculara Labs that you can look into for that sort of thing. And there are all kinds of um, labs that will look very specifically for infection. So again, a lot of those like Babesia, Borrelia, Ehrlichiosa, uh, Mycoplasma, all these kinds of Lyme co-infectors. There's a company called Vibrant well Wellness, for instance, that you can, you can get um, tested uh, looking for those kinds of infections. Mm -hmm.